All right, y'all, welcome back to the next part of the Rat Rod Racing Lawn Mower. So, this video, we're going to be making a shifter because there's no shifter at all, which is a bit plain. We're going to be adding brakes, and we're going to be installing front wheel bearings because the bushings are completely shot, and putting the battery back in the rear end because the battery's too big. So, yeah, let's get to it. We will also be putting medium rollers in the front half of the 40 series torque converter to raise the engine engagement RPM. So here's my idea for this shifter. I'm gonna go out there, rob a lever off the donor, put it right here, get this 10 inch, half inch bolt that I was gonna get to make the change engine for the four wheeler and it didn't work, so I have it laying around. And I'm gonna stick it through there. Got these little spacers so that way it can roll. And yeah, just make something of that. So I got my bolt right here and I cut out a piece of flat bar and I'm gonna weld this just like that and I cut three holes in it so that way once it's in there, if the shifting linkage is not, you know, it won't go into whatever gear, I can just move it in whatever hole and fine tune it. Bam, y'all, got that welded on there. Got the shifting linkage done. All I gotta do now is weld this on top of there, but yeah. Reverse, neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Neutral, reverse, neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Time for wheel bearings. There's a little bit of play in the spindle but these bushings in here are completely worn out, especially on this side. This side is like super bad. So we are back now with the wheels, got all four bearings in there. And basically what we have done to do this was get a steel rod, go down the bushings, whack the crap out of it with a hammer, get all the bushings out, clean out the grease, chuck new bearings in, press them in, and yeah, you got ball bearings in your wheels. Pretty simple. By the way, make sure they're flange bearings so they don't go down in there. But bushing's okay, you know, if you're just cutting grass, you keep them greased regularly, and even do a slight pulley swap, driving around the yard, you'll be fine. But if you're gonna do something like what I'm doing, yeah, you're gonna need bearings. And now we can see with the wheels on that there's a little bit of play in here, but that is no wheel play on the spindle. The shaft spindle, not the steering spindle. Same on this side. Nothing. So for my battery box here, I'm gonna use a Predator 212 exhaust shield. Yes, even more of a Cars and Cameras copycat because they use a exhaust shield too from a 212, but they use a non-Hemi. This is a Hemi exhaust shield, so we're not quite a copycat. But anyway, we're gonna slip that down in there and yeah, trim, trim it up a little bit. And this battery is way, way, way too big. Uh, it's actual uh, lawnmower battery, need like an ATV battery. So size wise, they're about six and three quarter inches long, about three and three quarter inches wide, and about six inches tall. So the width is fine, but I really need something like a five inch by, I don't know, four inch maybe. So let's just write that down. So four inches is the width. Yeah, I know you can make fun of my spelling. I tried using the Tecumseh exhaust shield, but it's just kind of too big and kind of too ugly. Boom! Double boom! So the cables and everything are done, just need to put the battery in it. And sometime I do want to do in the future, not in this video, is somehow lower the seat. So brake-wise, we're going to be doing the same thing again, what cars and cameras did. Because their design worked very well. Well, somewhat well. And yeah, I'm going to try to use that same design too. So this angle iron is in there, drill all the holes right here. So the brakes are not done yet, but I want to put it on the ground, drive it around, see how my shifter holds up and see how well these uh, front wheel bearings are going to turn out.
So I'm back now, but the shifter did very well. I had no problems with that at all. Obviously brakes wasn't on there. The bearings. Bearings did better, okay? But there's still obsessive amount of frogging, bunny hopping, whatever. This crap is really getting annoying because like, I'll be just in second going around and hit gas, got love, but it'll start going crazy and crap. And there's, I mean, yes, I know there's a ton of play in the steering wheel, but it's not because it has tons of play in the steering wheel. The spindle's right there. Maybe that could be it right there because it has a little bit of play, but I mean, that shouldn't really affect it that much. I pulled off the side of the road, let some air out of both tires, and it seemed to do better. But that tells me, really, that these tires are out of balance. Just like on the four-wheeler right there, that tire, since it has slime in it, you get about 38 or so, and that starts going crazy. Uh, there's no slime in this. They're, they're brand new tires. I don't get it, but I don't know. I'm gonna try some different tires, do something. So this mower here, uh, yeah, I almost kind of got killed on it because I took it down there to the cul-de-sac. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go full throttle all the way down, see what kind of top speed I can get. And I let off the gas a little too late. And yeah, I hit the clutching, no brakes. And I was going about 30 miles an hour, fixing to run through the cul-de-sac and run through my whole neighbor's yard. So I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? I'm sitting there panicking, lawnmowers rolling 30 miles an hour and crap. I start gearing the dang transaxle down and crap. It's like, ear, ear, ear. gearing down and yeah, I turned and it, it almost came up on two wheels. Like this wheel just came off the ground. Like, oh shoot. And yeah, cut it and I stopped. So yeah, don't be stupid when you're driving sketchy crap like this. I was like Titanic heading full speed ahead toward the iceberg. I'm also gonna redo this spindle for obvious reasons. So I got the front end done. I kind of welded right up on top and on the bottom right there to keep the spindle from slopping back and forth a lot. Uh, same thing pretty much on that side. But if we spin the wheel, yeah, look at that. Look how out of balance this wheel is. Same thing on this side. Now I have no idea how I'm supposed to be balancing these wheels right there. Uh, we have some Pinewood Derby weights for Pinewood Derby cars upstairs. So I'm gonna see if I can find those. Hopefully we might have some. So that way I can kind of stick them on the wheel and kind of halfway balance the wheel. So good luck. I found a quite a bit of extra weights up here. And yeah, that's why you never throw away your stuff because you never know when you're gonna use them. Down the stairs we go. So if I can't balance these wheels with the Pinewood Derby weights, I'm gonna have to take them off and take them to Tires Plus or wherever and explain to them why I'm trying to balance lawnmower tires. Remember what I said, function over beauty. Yes, I know, this is like the most formal glory of wheel weights right, right here. If we look on wheel weights, like on this car, I'm pretty sure that's a wheel weight, got this cover right here, but yeah. Very fine wheel weight on something like that. Something like this, yeah, this is quarter inch round stock, Pinewood Derby weights, but it literally took this much to actually make it somewhat balanced. I mean, you would not believe how out of balance this wheel was, but you know, when it's on there, nobody's gonna see it. I'm probably gonna paint it with spray paint, paint it white, so really nobody can see it. I sure hope this is gonna work. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the sides of the mower. I already taped it up, cleaned it up, and yeah. Boom! I've also had a lot of people tell me this and a couple comments about why I don't make some metal shroud or something to go over the dry shaft. Well, here's the thing. Number one, I mean, it's just gonna take a whole ton of work trying to make this whole shroud thing. Plus it's gonna be way out here and crap and it'll just look kind of retarded. Two, it's gonna ruin the look. It's gonna look retarded, just being a big blob right here. Function over beauty does not apply on this stuff. And to me, it looks cooler with the shaft poking out like this. And three, you hardly get anywhere near it. I mean, it, I mean, just, you, you don't, don't be stupid when you're on here and be like, oh, what does this do? And reach your hand in there. Or yeah, let's just put my leg in there. 
I mean, just don't be stupid. The governor on this engine is don't be stupid. The safety factor that allows you to go full speed in sixth gear, just to rip it back in reverse while driving down the road, is don't be stupid. So yeah, my toy, I'm gonna leave it off. If you have one, if you have something with the jack shaft in it right in between your legs or whatever, if you wanna put it on, put it on. You know, do, do what you wanna do. Let me do what I wanna do. Now I'm gonna drop the rear end and while it's out of there, I'm gonna go over the wire brush, clean all this stuff up, make it look nice, put some clear coat paint on it. And yeah, this should look really good. So I got the transaxle outside now and I got found this rust remover stuff and I'm just gonna kinda spray this stuff on here, let it sit and then come back and see how it looks. All right, I am like absolutely freezing in here. All right. So I'm gonna let this dry, flip it over, spray it again, give it another coat, bam. Rear ends reinstalled. I literally just sat the box in the floor and these cats are already going crazy over it. We got Power Sports is here. Let's see what we got. So, muffler bracket for the racing go kart. Drum brake clamp. Wow, that's actually really big. Drum brake itself. Medium weights for the torque converter. Battery, gussets, stickers, and order form. New on the right, old on the left. And I'm gonna charge this battery because you're supposed to charge them before you use them. Reason I got gussets is because I'm gonna weld this to that and I think that'll have a pretty cool look to it. And yeah, I know I painted it before I got these, but I saw this on the website and I'm like, oh yeah, these look cool. So, and I don't know why the camera's out of frame, but yeah, I'm gonna stick that on there. This is for this right here. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is a one inch shaft, this is a three quarter inch shaft. And I got this little spacer here and luckily it already has a cut in it. I'm gonna jam it inside of this thing and that should work very well. So, I just now I got all my nuts and bolts and everything pretty much set up. Right here I got a full threaded bolt so I can adjust the linkage and make it tighter and looser. Put a spacer right here so I can weld this wherever it's at. Round stock stuff on there. Got one right here to support it. Got a weld support right here, but that'll be a little bit later. Boom, got it hooked up. Works semi well. Um, yep, I had to put that right there because that one to keep going over there and won't fall off. So next I'm gonna weld the drum brake on. Look at the difference between TIG welding and flux core welding. Major difference. So here it is in all its formal glory. So I have it where I can push the clutch about three quarters of the way down. Before, and the last quarter is when the brake actually engages. And got my clutch all the way down. I'm trying to reach all the way around. Yeah, this should work somewhat well. All right, so the wheel is on there. Everything kind of halfway clears. But yeah, this took a lot of frustration and foreverness trying to get it on there so the C clip would go on there. I wanted to put the washer on, but that just wasn't going to happen. Now I don't really want it with the clutch and brakes together because driving this thing and driving this thing in the way it shifts right here, that's I don't know. That's just going to be kind of weird. So in another video, we're going to make that right there at the brake and keep that just the clutch. Next, we're gonna be putting the medium weight rollers in the torque converter. All right, let's see what's in here. Sometimes when I would hit the gas, it would like go back to normal for whatever reason. Da, 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 da. Yep. Here are the new ones compared to the old ones. With just the medium weights and the stock springs, the engagement is 2200 RPMs. There you go, there's the chart. Boom!
I'm back now, it did a lot better. The front wheels actually did a lot better. It's not perfect, but way better than it was before. I was able to get 46 miles an hour out of this thing. So yeah, we did beat cars and cameras in this video. So, but it's not done yet, not completely. I need still, I need to still adjust the brakes, make that into the brake, uh, rig up a different kind of exhaust, just little things, and that'll all be in, in another video. So yeah, I hope you all like this video. If you did, y'all know what to do. I'm not gonna force y'all to do things y'all wanna do. And yeah, y'all should see me in the next part of the Rat Rod Racing Lawnmower. Here's a sneak peek on the future project. That'll be in another video.